Paul Goebel is a Caldecott Medal award-winning children's book author and illustrator who is best known for his stories about American Indians. He was born in Haslemere, Surrey, England on September 27th of 1933. As a young boy, he spent time at a nearby lake studying insect, animal, and plant life and began to draw and paint from nature and specimens in books and museums. Paul studied at Central School of Art in London, where he worked as a furniture designer, industrial consultant, and art instructor. He took his first trip to the U.S. in 1959 to an Indian reservation, where he was intrigued with the Indian spirituality and culture. In the year 1969, Paul published his first book titled Red Hawk's Account of Custer's Last Battle. After several summers spent in the U.S., Paul moved to the Black Hills of South Dakota in 1977 and became a U.S. citizen in 1984. He was adopted into the Yakima tribe by Chief Edgar Red Cloud. His Indian name was Wakinyan Chikala, or Little Thunder. He was greatly influenced by the Indian culture of the Great Plains. He once said, I feel that I have seen and learned many wonderful things from Indian people, which most people would never have the opportunity to experience. I simply wanted to express and to share these things which I love so much. Most of Goebel's books retell ancient stories told from the perspective of American Indians. This is part of his effort to make Indians' traditions understandable to children of all heritages. In 1978, Paul won the very prestigious Caldecott Medal Award for his work on The Girl Who Loved Horses. Paul's illustrations accurately depict Native American clothing, customs, and surroundings in great color and detail. He has said that, throughout my books, I have tried to reflect the special Indian feeling of mystical relationships with nature. He gave his entire collection of original illustrations to the South Dakota Art Museum of Brookings, South Dakota. Goebel has written and illustrated over 30 books and has won many awards for his work, including the Caldecott Medal Award, the Regina Medal in 2006, the Library of Congress Children's Book of the Year with Starboy, the Children's Book Council Children's Choice in 2004, and several of his books have been chosen by the Reading Rainbow. Paul Goebel now resides in Rapid City, South Dakota with his wife. The first book that I read by Goebel was The Girl Who Loved Wild Horses. The young Native American girl in this story loves the people of her village, but she has an even deeper connection with the horses. When a storm comes one day, she and the horses become lost and end up in a beautiful land filled with waterfalls, flowers, and sunshine. The people of the village search for her and the horses, but they are nowhere to be found. Two years later, two men find her, but her stallion and colt protect her from them because they love her so much. She eventually goes back to her people, but is very sad and becomes sick. Her parents see that she loves them, but isn't happy. When they ask her what she wants, she chooses to live with the horses. She visits once every year until one year she never shows up. Her people believe that she finally became one of the horses that she loves so dearly. Mystic Horse is about a poor Pawnee boy and his grandmother that find a sick abandoned horse, but the men of their village make fun of him because he is weak. When enemies attack, the horse tells the boy to cover him with mud and run through the field and strike the enemy with a willow branch four times, but no more. After the boy does what he is told, the men are cheering for him and help him fight off the enemy. Since the boy is confident, he decides to strike the enemy once more. He does, and the horse dies. The boy feels so bad for not listening that he goes to the mountaintop and grieves. Suddenly he sees the horse move and it comes to life. From then on, he knows this horse has mystical powers. The horse told the boy that the father from above had forgiven him. The horse told him to take him to the hills and leave him there for four days. The boy came back after the fourth day and found the horse followed by a group of beautiful horses of every color. The boy got on his horse and drove to his grandmother and said that she would never have to walk anywhere again and she could have any horse she wanted. The boy and his grandmother rode to each camp and they were no longer poor. Stormmaker's TP is about two Blackfoot hunters that are caught in a terrible blizzard while hunting. They hide under the skin of a buffalo that they killed and waited for the storm to pass. The father sees a large mystic TP in the distance. It belongs to the Stormmaker, or bringer of blizzards. The store maker tells them that he will not let him and his son die, as long as he goes back home and paints the teepee the exact way as his own. When Sacred Otter and Morning Plume return, they spend all spring painting their teepee. The next winter, store maker is about to bring another storm. The father holds his pipe up and asks the store maker to pity the women and children. 
The storm maker did just that, and the storm passed over. The teepee had given Sacred Otter and his people good luck, and from then on, he captured many horses from the enemy and gave them all to people that needed them. Iktomi and the Berries is about a foolish Indian that gets himself into trouble all because of some bright red berries that he thinks are growing just for him in the river. He set out to go hunting and decided to get some prairie dog. He put on coyote skin because he thought that the animals would think he was one of them, but instead they just laughed. He got even hungrier and decided to shoot some ducks, but as he crawled to the river he didn't see that the bank overhung the river and he fell in, scaring all the ducks away. As he sat by the river he looked into the water and saw fresh red berries. He thought the berries couldn't go get away from him and jumped into the water to get them, but he couldn't find them anywhere. He thought that he must have the wrong spot, so he tried again but came up with nothing. He thought that if he could stay down longer, he would be able to get them. He, so he tied a rope around his neck and the other end to a large boulder. He swung the rock into the river and down he went. But he still couldn't find those berries and now he needed air. He finally floated to the top and as he lay, looking to the sky, he saw the berries hanging from a tree and realized it was a reflection. He got so angry that he began yelling at the berries and beating them with his bow. He knocked off the berries into the river and the ducks had a feast. People still pick those berries after the first frost of fall. They put a blanket under the tree and beat it with a stick, just as Zictomi did. Although the books have different plots and endings, their illustrations are quite similar in the way that most of them have mountains, Indians, and horses in them. The drawings are very detailed and have a lot of colors. Although each book may have similar illustrations, each one tells a different story.